when I was sort of looking at pictures, I was drawn to two different images. One of them had all these blues and oranges that created this really beautiful contrast as complementary colors. And then the other one had a lot of this sort of these organic lines in here, like you see down there. So I sort of tried to combine the two, creating a round but still organic shape and then using the colors that I was really drawn to. Hello, we're back and we're working on our project for Art in the Cosmic Connection. And earlier we had blocked in our major shapes and started to add some of the detail to our drawing. Back and we're going to start talking about light and how light gives the illusion of depth on a two-dimensional surface. And if you'll notice, you have some highlights on the front and on the back side. And if you also notice, you have a shadow here. And what that is, is the sun is coming from this direction across these craters and it is creating a shadow and a highlight just like you would have here on earth if you were standing outside. So what we're going to teach you how to do is use a very simple technique to use light and shadow to create depth in the craters of your drawing. If you look at this image, essentially you're going to use the same pattern for each circular feature. As the sunlight grows across the surface, it is creating a highlight on the rims of the craters on this side. And those are the faces that are facing the sun or the source of light. On the opposite side of that crater, there would be a shadow. And again, I'm doing it on the opposite side of that highlight mark and basically kind of the same location as all of the craters. Next, I'm kind of blending that in to go from a really dark value to a lighter value. So that was the sun coming from this side of the crater. Now what's happening is the sun is highlighting the inside of the crater wall, think of a crater as a bowl. And it's highlighted the outside here and the inside of this crater wall. So you have the inside of your crater rim being lit by the sun. And oftentimes there will be a shadow cast on the opposite side. Again, think of this as a bowl in the ground. And I'm just kind of blending in these areas. So right now what we're doing is we're both going back and we're adding just a few more highlights and some more texture to give the drawing just a little bit more depth. Tips and smudge sticks can be really helpful. So we'd like to put a couple things on the piece that we've done. First of all, a great thing to do when you're making art is to hold a stand back from it. It'll really help you to see which part, portions of your drawing are really popping and are you're happy with and which portions you feel like you might need to address. We also wanted to show you some, kind of some differences between craters. This crater that I drew, I did it with really precise lines. It's very regular and geometric, which indicates it's probably like a fresher crater. But when you look at your image, you'll see kind of these more organic looking craters that have rough edges. And so Tyler addressed this shape with using a lot of different kinds of mark making. So there's not a super sharp line but it looks like it's been more of an eroded feature. You'll notice that some of have much larger shadows or a shadow that is more prominent on the back side of the crater too. This is really what gives you your depth and it also speaks to the relative size of the craters. So something with a little less shadow is going to be a little bit flatter and especially when you are not seeing a shadow on the back side. So look the more you'll see and maybe the more questions you have 
And that is how artists and scientists both work, is by observing and asking questions and trying to figure out why. We'd like to show you two great examples of student work. Each student addressed their art images and making craters in two very different ways, but both are very successful. The thing about art is, is there, it's, it's inspirational. There's no right or wrong. You don't have to make a crater look exactly like a crater. You can interpret it however you want. This piece that Jennifer did really used black and white, the highlights and the shadows that we were discussing to create very dramatic composition with a lot of depth. So Jennifer took a more representational approach to her drawing. That means she wanted to draw her piece so that it very much represented her source image. There's a different way that you can approach your work and that's in terms of abstraction. Mari created a piece of art inspired by craters, but she really abstracted it. She was focused on making circular shapes, having playful colors, and it's the type of drawing that you could see a lot of things in. She's not the shadow and the value that we discussed before. Nonetheless, her drawing turned out amazing with these great positive spaces and these dark negative spaces. And if we look at the drawings that we've just talked about, you'll notice that there is a very vast difference and the way that all three of these drawings were done and addressed from the onset. And that is the point here, is that really this is about exploring planetary surfaces and trying to get to know them a little bit better in comparison to our own surface and the type of marks that we can make using pastels and paper.